Hi everybody and welcome back to Dusty Book Sniffers. My name's Nicole and today we're here for another episode in Meet the Author, so let's get started. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while I prattle on about the books that I'm going to read. Now, by now, you would have already seen my first episode of Meet the Author, which I um, discovered that I really like Sally Hepworth. I'd never read anything by her, and lots of friends had been recommending me to read her. And um, yeah, so I really enjoyed that. And you, I'll link the video up down below. You can go and check that out. So this month, I am doing a Meet the Author again and this time we are going to be introducing me to Kate Morton. Now I've heard lots of good things about her books. They're all chunksters as you can see. I've been lucky enough to get these three books uh, second hand so I only paid two dollars each for them and I also got them for, um, on Borrow Box on audio so that's going to help me get through these. Now I'm only doing um, one episode a month of Meet the Author unless of course they write really short books then I might s slot in another one but I'm super excited to a read more from um, Kate Morton. She is an Australian author, um, my understanding is, and I believe that she uh, grew up in southeast Queensland. I'm not sure if she still lives here or not. So um, I'm not too, I'm thinking I'm going to, start, I'm not going to do them in any particular order. I think I might just go with the size that they are and how I've got them stacked here. I think I'll just go with um, Shifting Frog first and then we'll go the Lake House and then Distance Hours. So my understanding of Kate Morton, she she writes historical fiction, judging by the covers, very much so, and she's a mystery writer as well. So um, the first one that I'm going to start with, as I said, is um, The Shifting Fog. This, All I know about this is it's set in um, the summer of 1924, and it looks like it's a dual timeline, and also winter of 1999. Uh, it's full of lovely writing, grand houses, snobbery, cruelty, and, a, and passion. Sorry, This compelling mystery come love story is utterly addictive. So that sounds like it's a little bit up my alley. So I thought I'll give this one a go. As I said, I've got it on audio on borrow box so that's going to give me a chance to start it um, I have 16 days to get this done um, so this is going to take me a while so I'm, I'm going to try and do one a week and um, then I'll wrap it all up and you'll see little, little bits and pieces that I got up to during the month while I was reading these so what I did last time was I would read a couple of chapters and then I come back and give you my initial thoughts about how I felt the book was going to go then I would check in again at around 100 120 pages because that's my DNF point um, whether I'm going to continue on with it and then I'll come back for the final wrap up. So that's what we're going to do for each of the books. So without further ado, let's get into the vlog. Well, good morning, everybody. I am just out driving yet again. Um, I'm just doing a check-in for Shifting Fog from Kate Morton. Uh, this is my first check-in. I normally check in after um, like three or four chapters. I am about three or four chapters in, maybe a bit more, um, but um, I'm on page 134. So, yeah, it is not a fast-paced book by any long shot, but it's so atmospheric. Um, I'm really enjoying the story, and funnily enough, I actually started with Kate Morton's first book. I, now, as you know, this vlog is about meeting the author for the first time for me, um, and all that sort of stuff. So, Basically, I really can't stand my hair when it's this length and down. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm really loving the atmospheric um, vibe that I'm getting from it. It's set in the early 1920s and it comes back to 1999 as well. So Grace is 98 in 1999. And Grace is telling the story of when she was at um, Riverton House and she, the Hartford kids is she's 14 at the time when she goes into service and the Hartford kids Emmeline look at me go remembering names Emmeline Hannah and David um, play these games and she secretly watches them and and all that sort of stuff and she's getting to know the kids a little bit better now we are at the beginning right now we're at the beginning of the First World War and um, yeah and so there's like a little bit of hubbub about you know giving guys that don't go to war the white feather and all this sort of stuff and basically um 
Yeah, so she's just sort of observing is probably the word to say, and she's relaying the story. So she's talking to her grandson, I believe she's recording them, to her, her grandson, um, Marcus, in 1999. Um, but she's reflecting back until the beginning of the war. So it does say on the back of the book that it is set in 1924, but we're back in 1914 at the moment, 15. Um, and so it is a well-to-do house that we're in. And so she, as I said, she's in service. And if you've read any historical fiction, you know there's definitely the upstairs, downstairs, and, the, and neither the two meet sort of thing. Um, so it's definitely got that vibe and, and whatnot. And um, so, yeah. But it's actually really giving me Downton Abbey vibes. And I've just started watching Downton Abbey. So, it, like, again, I've, I've watched it through the first time when it first came to, to uh, TV. And I thought, you know what, I wouldn't mind re-watching that again. And, um, yeah, I'm up to the second season right now. So there's a lot of, oh, my God, that's just like, like, it feels like I'm reading Downton Abbey right now. Um, because, you know, David's going off to war, like, yeah, so I, it's almost like a comparison, really. But it's not. It has nothing to do with it. They, they, all the characters are different and all of that sort of stuff. But it just definitely gives me that Downton Abbey vibe. So I must be in the mood for a Downton Abbey sort of book. So I'm really happy that I picked up this first one. Um, as I said, funnily enough, it is her first novel that she ever wrote. So it's going to be good to see where she goes from this point. Um, because I've got two others, which I think is The Lake House and um, Distant Hours, I think, is the other one. And... Um, um, yeah, and so they're all historical fiction mysteries um, and whatnot, from what I can tell. Uh, so yeah, so I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I just thought I'd quickly check in because I've got a feeling that this book is going to go pretty fast. Even though it's slow paced, you just get so drawn in to um, the story and the narrator, which I can't remember off the top of my head now, like, come on, I have remembered all the names of the characters in the book and, I, and I'm not remembering, and even the author, and I, I'm, I'm just going to have to say I can't remember the narrator's name, but she's doing a fabulous job. Um, she's very easy to listen to her her voice is very silky which um i know that sounds weird but it's a, yeah like her voice is very silky when i listen to it there's enough of an accent there that's not too strong um it's a well to do accent she sort of sounds like lady mary from or lady no probably more like um lady sybil from Downton Abbey. <laughs> I'll crack up laughing if it is actually her. But yeah, sort of like a combination of Lady Mary and Lady Sybil. Um, so yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm looking forward to reading more and seeing where it goes. A uh, new character has just come in, which has sort of upset the ca apple cart because the Hartford children um, play these games. And what the first rule of the game is that... Um, the game is secret. The next one is <clears throat> only three can play. And it's Christmas time and Hannah and Emmy or Emmeline, have been waiting for David to come back from Eton, um, which is a school for those that don't know, and um, quite a popular school. I think the royal family goes to it and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, boys' school. And basically, he's come home, but he's brought someone with him, um, and his name is Robbie. So that is where we're at right now, there, that he's come home. So there's nothing, like, extraordinary that's happened yet. It is just basically Grace has gone into service and she's watching them. And right now in the story, I'm like, I would love to have a library like with 10,000 books in it. In the 1800s, a uh, tradition started in the house that every year um, when the last leaf falls, they go in and they dust the 10,000 volumes that they have in the library. Um, and so I'm like, oh, 10,000 books. I would just be in seventh heaven, wouldn't you? Like, when you think about 10,000 books, it's just like, it just feels like a huge hug <laughs> to me. I don't know. I find that so comforting. Um, but anyway, yeah, so she at the moment is in there. Um, and, you know, we're learning little bits and pieces about um, the children and and her by her observing and that so I'm going to get back to the story um absolutely loving it definitely not dnfing it uh, and yeah and I'll check in maybe halfway through the book because um 
it's a six, almost a 600 page book. So I'll check in at about 300 pages and um, let you know how I'm feeling and whether it's still keeping that atmospheric and all the rest of it. And there's supposed to be a love story in it. So that hasn't sort of happened yet. So I'm guessing that that will um, appear around the halfway point, maybe a little bit further on. I'm just checking in. Oh, I just finished reading the second part of um, Shifting Fog. It's broken up into three parts in the book. Um, the second part wasn't super exciting. It was still very atmospheric. It still drawn me into the story. Still thoroughly enjoying the story. We're getting a little bit of going backwards and, and forwards. Not a lot. Just um, every now and again we go back to 1999 with Grace still recording the tapes and all that sort of stuff for her um, grandson who is a mystery writer um, we've learnt that uh, she doesn't know where her grandson is right now um, very early in the book we we learnt that he lost his wife to an aneurysm and um, that was like in the first couple of chapters we learnt that about him and basically um, yeah so she doesn't really know but she's still making these tapes and she's sending them off and just getting everything down on tape now she is Grace um, and she's 98 years old and lives in a retirement village. Um, her daughter Ruth is still on the scene, um, but they have a very strained relationship. Now, the second part of this, not a great deal has happened. It's just basically Grace telling her story to the tapes um, about what happened at the Hartford house and, and what was happening with the children and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not going to go into that. There's a little bit of a, um, I don't know, there's a, there seems to be some sort of underlying thing happening. Like I get this suspicion like something's about to be exposed about Grace or about one of the Hartford um, kids or something. I don't know. I just can't get this feeling like there's something that's happening so subtly that I'm not too sure what it is. Now, this is a mystery. Um, so... <laughs> very well done if that is the case that I'm getting that sneaking suspicion that there is something something not quite right but at the same time not a lot happened in the second part it was just a lot of um filling in the blanks about you know what happened to them some of the boys when they came back from war being shell-shocked and all that sort of stuff um <coughs> and just different things that and and points of view I guess is the way to explain it um it's like it's really weird. Like I'm so sucked into this story, but nothing really happened in the second part. Um, there was a few things that happened, but nothing of super excitement, but it's such a wonderful story. Like it, it is just so atmospheric. It's pulling me in. Like I, I know that I've said this I, uh, like a couple of times now, but it has just so drawn me into this story that I don't actually want to put it down. Um, but I couldn't tell you why um, for that second part. Like there was a whole lot of nothing, <laughs> you know, like the second, the, the first world war happened and all that sort of stuff. And, and um, you know, there's been some things around the family and stuff like that, but nothing super compelling or anything like that but still just a wonderful story it still definitely has the Downton Abbey vibes um I'm up to season three of that and just some of the things that happen in this like we're in 1919 right now so we're in the, the Spanish flu um pandemic or epidemic yeah there's just so many like I can I'm like oh yeah well that would be that scene and that would be this scene and that would be this scene like if I, I I actually went and searched up to find out if this was actually the inspiration for Downton Abbey and it wasn't like but anybody that's picked this up and watched Downton Abbey you would say that this was the inspiration behind it and maybe the characters have been changed and the family's been changed but you can definitely draw comparisons with it. So if you love Downton Abbey, you're going to really like this because it is the slow um, slow pacing of Downton Abbey. Um, you've got all upstairs, downstairs, and Grace is the lady's maid um, that is telling the story. Um, she started out as a maid and then she ended up upstairs um, looking after um, Hannah and Emily. Um, and so she is observing their family and she's relaying all this onto the tapes to her 
um, grandson. Why? I do not know yet. Um, all we know about a grandson is he is a mystery writer. He writes books and he writes for the mystery genre. And she feels that it feels a need to tell him all this. And we've got Ursula who is create recreating um, a movie from um, around what the events that happened in 1924. So we're still f uh, five years away from 1924. It's still moving pretty quick because remember we started in the first part, we started in um, 1914. Um, before the First World War had actually started, before Britain had come into the war. So yeah, like it's just like, it's so weird. I've not read a book like that where I'm so drawn into the story, but nothing really happened. And I don't feel bored. I actually am enjoying myself. It's so bizarre. I just love the way she writes. I'm, I'm, I have fallen in love with um, right now, I, I can honestly say I have fallen in love with Kate Morton's writing and I am so kicking myself that I have not listened to or read her books up until now. So I'm hoping that the other two books that I've got on the on the um, table to read are just as good as this one. And if, if any of the reviews to go by um, and any of the uh, articles are to go by, they, she outdoes herself. Um, in her next books um, because this was her very first book that she ever wrote and you know me I love a good first like the first uh, and it was just sheer luck that I picked up her very first book um, because I got these second hand so and, and if you've been around for a while you do know that I love a good debut novel because I've always said that they put their fo best foot forward for a debut novel sometimes they can be even better with their, their second book, sometimes a bit hit and it might be two or three books before they get back on track again to what they were trying to achieve. Uh, not that I'm an expert in by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to writing and all that sort of stuff. I just know what I enjoy and how I feel about a, a story. Um, but yeah, like I said, I nothing really happened in part two. Um <laughs> but I'm still thoroughly enjoying the story if you haven't like I'm just going to go out on a limb now and say if you have not picked up a Kate Morton book may I suggest you pick this one up you will probably this this book here in Australia is called Shifting Fog um everywhere else in the world it's called Riverton House um I'm not 100% sure why only in Australia it is um, called Shifting Fog but a uh, article I was reading about Kate Morton I was trying to find out like if there was actual fact like if Riverton House was a true uh, like an actual house or anything like that um, and I come across an article where it said that Shifting Fog was uh, it was Riverton House and then in brackets in Australia Shifting um, Fog and that's the only place that it's been named that so a few people on sprints the other day were confused by that because they didn't know they had never heard of it before and um, the reason why is because they don't live in Australia and and um, they were living in the rest of the world and it's called Riverton House everywhere else so I am going to go and rescue my plants that I can hear the kittens playing around with um I don't know what they're doing out there, but they're making a hell of a racket. So I'm going to go and rescue whatever they're into, um, and then I'm going to get into part three. Although it is getting pretty late here, and I've had a huge day, and I'm thinking maybe I should just wait and maybe read another two chapters. I don't know. Anyway, I will check in when I'm finished this book. Okay, so I am doing my final check-in for... Um, Shifting Fog by Kate Morton. Okay, so if I haven't already said this, which I think I have, Shifting Fog is the name of the book here in Australia. Everywhere else it is called um, Riverton House. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. um, and it gets so confusing because I'm picking up the book. It's got Shifting Fog on it. So, yeah. So, anyway, I'm not too sure why or anything like that. I guess Shifting Fog makes it mysterious and all that sort of stuff and you start to see like the mystery is unfolded. You know, like I'm purely speculating here, right? Anyway, what can I say about this book? I have actually given this book five stars. I had such a great time reading this book. Now, I have been having an absolute phenomenal year of reading discovering new authors and all that sort of stuff so my rating has my rating for books has been pretty high like I don't think I've had too many three star reads this year I've had so many four star 4.5 4.75 and five star reads I'm going to give this far a five star read because I thoroughly enjoyed how this ended up 
playing out. So basically, we are in the summer, uh, we're in two timelines. So we're in the summer of 1924, and I'm going to refer to the back because I'm always forgetting the name, uh, the year that we're in, and the winter of uh, 1999. Now, in the winter of 1999, we meet Grace. Grace is 98 years old, yeah, 98 years old, she is in a nursing home um, and basically she is telling her story from when she was a maid at Riverton House back in 1924. There was an event that happened and we know straight off from the bat that a young poet killed himself. Okay, now this book is described as uh, a mystery come love story. Okay, and it is that. It is definitely a mystery come love story. So there is an underlying love story, um, basically, of the poet and another character in the book who I'm not going to say. Um, but it's focusing on the Riverton house children. Okay, there was David, there was Hannah, and there was Emmeline. And so basically, and, and then there's Grace. Now, Grace is a maid. She's gone into service at the age of 14 and she's watching these children. So she eventually, we as we go through the story, um, and this is not really a spoiler because we know this anyway. As we go through the story, you are following with Grace and she's observing these kids and she's telling their story uh, as an observer um, because in 1999 she's relaying this story down on the tapes for her grandson. So basically, yeah, so that's what that's how the storyline works. Now, the only thing that I can um, say that I, because you've already heard a lot of my thoughts and all the rest of it, the only thing that really confused me about this book was did this inspire Downton Abbey? But no, it didn't, okay? And I think I've already said that. But I very much got a Downton Abbey vibe from it. And I think it was because of the sum of the timeline. Now, it says that it's 1924 on the back, but really we start 10 years earlier and we're watching a 10-year um, unfolding because uh, Grace is telling the story of how they got to that point in 1924. Um, and all that sort of stuff. So there's lots of different players in this book. And it, it, as I said, it's just going through this story and we're learning about it. And I was totally enthralled by this story because of the simple fact is that, um, you know, we had the sinking of the Titanic. We had the, the Great War um, and we had all the things that are in Downton Abbey. And that's why I was getting that really familiar thing. So if you love Downton Abbey, you're going to love this. And at times you're going to question yourself because some of the things that happen in it feel like that's the actual case. Um, so yeah, so this is my first time meeting this author and so I'm really happy with how it's all planned out. So um, I'm, I'm just think I'm just going to leave it at that because I think you should pick it up if you haven't. As it turned out, this happened to be her debut novel. Um, and as I've said in the past, I love debut novels because they tend to put their best foot forward. So I'm really keen to move on to the next one, which I'm thinking I'm going to move on to um, oh, what is it? Distant Hours is the next one I'm moving on to, which I have the book, but it's in, in the house at the moment, so I'm not going to worry about grabbing it. Um, but you'll get to see it anyway. I'm going to talk about it and whatnot. So I was lucky enough to find this book and also Distant Hours and um, the other one, which is The Forgotten Garden, I think I've got, um, is all on um, Borrow Box. So I'm able to do some immersive reading with it. I highly recommend that you do some immersive reading with her books. They are chunksters. This one comes in at um, 551 pages. So not overly big for me probably you know a hundred and maybe a hundred pages 80 pages more than what I normally read anyway um so yeah so it was really really enjoyable I had a great time I could not put it down I had to know what was going on there was and the love story aspect of it would not only were we the poet and the other character but Grace also had a love story happening as well um and I'm not going to spoil it for you because yeah um and how that all turned out and all all the rest of it and even how uh, um, Kate Morton brought in the end of life into it as well um with around Grace because we've got to remember Grace is 98 years old um and so just how she's perceiving everything at towards the end of her life and I can imagine that's how a lot of people probably would have felt about when they're getting towards the end of life that they need to get these things out and and all the rest of it and you know that sometimes people are just not really paying attention and all that so I really liked how she broached on that it was done very tastefully in my opinion um and not corny in any way like sometimes when you read like when people are getting towards the end of life they're 
they, you know, they're crotchety and all that sort of stuff. There was none of that sort of thing in there. Um, but yeah, like that was, I really liked that part of it as well. And there was also like, you know, just enough mystery and intrigue to keep you turning those pages. All right, I'm going to stop talking about this one and we're going to move on to the next one. Um, but I have definitely given this five stars. All right, have a great day, everybody. And I'll check in soon with the next book that I'm reading. Okay, so the next two books, I thought I had the secret garden, the lost garden or something it's called it's not that it's um i have the lake house and i have a distant hours now i think i'm going on to distance hours because i think this is the next one like it's in the timeline of her books i think this was 2010 so this one was 2006 and this was 2010 and i think there might have even been one between it but i'm just going to go with this one anyway again i picked this up for two dollars and i'm looking forward to getting more of her books this one's got a little bit of damage and all the rest of it but for what i want to do i'm not sure if i like her or not this is perfect so that is the one that i'm going to go on to next so wish me luck that this one is just as good okay so this this one doesn't really have a lot on the back and I don't want I sort of want to go into it blind it has more of a blurb on the inside cover as as we do with hard covers and um, I love the end papers very um very vintage looking um, it just says that it started with a letter a letter that had long been forgotten um, and had been waiting for half a ste uh, century in a forgotten postal bag in a dim attic of a nondescript house in Bermondsey I think is how you pronounce it Bermondsey I don't know but anyway that's the town that we're in so I am a look and you can tell it's historical fiction so I am looking forward to seeing what this is about I'm going to check in soon um, after reading four or five chapters um, I'll check in and let you know what the feel of the story is and uh, do the normal things that I do. Alrighty, see you soon. Well, good morning everybody. I am back for a check-in. Now, I am heading off to Gympie right now to get some Agatha Christie's because I've been struggling to find them and Bob has a box full and I'm only getting them for a dollar. So, I am driving two hours there, two hours back because it's worth it and it gets me out of the house for a little while. So, I've put all my stitching and everything on a hold for now and and uh, I'm heading off for the day now. I've already read Shifting Fog um, and absolutely loved it. Um, but Distant Hours, it's a very different book. I'm getting a very different vibe. Now I'm about 50 pages in. Um, I don't actually have the book with me today. I'm actually listening to the audio. So I'm going to get four hours into the audio. Um, yeah, so I'm about 50, 50 or 60 pages in. Um, the letter has turned up to her mother. Um, and I think her name's Elsie. I want to say Elsie. Um, it's probably not her name. I don't have the book here, so I can't tell you, but I want to say Elsie. But anyway, um, the main protagonist, <laughs> uh, her mother received this letter. She gasped that she had a bit of a cry, um, and she was telling her about when uh, the Second World War and they evacuated all the kids from London um, out into the country areas. And her mother was one of the evacuees and she ended up going to this, um, essentially they call it a castle. Um, I will be better prepared in the next check-in. <coughs> Hopefully I'll remember the name. Because <coughs> it has been a couple of days um, since I have listened to, the, uh, listened to and read it. So, um, yeah, so, so far it's, it's slow. Um, she has ended up going to um, this castle. And uh, basically, yeah, they're just starting, we're just starting to get to know the characters. So not much to tell. It is very, very much a different vibe. It is a lot slower um, as well. I'm hoping that it's going to pick up the pace a little bit because at the moment it is sitting pretty slow. And so right now I'm not sure whether I want to read it or want to read it or not. So um, yeah, sorry about the sun there. It's just the, the angle of the car. Um, yeah, so basically, I really don't know. Let me see if I get that off there. No, that's not going to make much. There we go. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm not too sure about the book right now. The storyline has me slightly intrigued, though. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to continue listening to it. I've got a lot of country roads to drive today. Um, so I've got about four hours of driving. So I should get a decent chunk of the book, at least be halfway into the book. Um, I've actually got two books on the go today. I've got Amari um, and the Knight Brothers and this one. So my driving car right now, a driving book is um, just an hours. All right, I'm going to get on with the rest of my day. Okay, so I've got to Gympie 
and uh, in true Gimpy fashion, it is raining. Um, but I've listened to another couple of hours of distant hours. I'm still not too sure. Like, it's pretty slow. It doesn't seem like much has happened. Um, we're back at World War II. Um, and we're sort of now starting to get to know the, the characters from World War II. Um, so we've got Juniper uh, and we've got uh, a set of twins, which their names are escaping me now. Pearl, I think Pearlie is one of them. Um, and I forget the other one's name. But anyway, um, yeah, so basically they're on a big estate and there's a castle on it and a farmhouse and all that sort of stuff. Their mother has uh, was killed in a accident at the the castle. The library burned down, and she got burnt and died from succumbed to her injuries. And Juniper's mother um, passed away when she was born. So we already knew that from the beginning of the book, anyway. Um, like that was in the opening um, paragraphs. So yeah, so basically, not a great deal has happened. Like I'm not sure I am actually understanding this story. Um, I guess it's a fairly chunky book. It's got over 500 pages. So I guess, you know, I'm probably maybe 100, 120 pages in right now. This is the point where I normally DNF, but I've got another two hours before I get back home again. So I'm thinking that I might just keep listening to it and make my decision when I get home. Um, of course, you know, like you can come across an author and not everything you're going to like. Like I've got three of her books. I couldn't find any more books while I was shopping this weekend for books. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to just stick with the three that I've got and I've got them on audio so I can still get through them pretty quickly. But I think I'll make, I'll wait until I get home and make the decision then if I'm going to DNF. It's, I'm interested but I'm not at the same time. So, and I've got nothing else downloaded or anything right now um, for uh, to listen to on the way home. So I think that that is what I'll do. So when I get home, I will check in with you and let you know whether I'm going to continue on. So. Hey everybody, I am here to do my final wrap up for uh, Kate Morton's Distant Hours. Um, this is a completely different book to what I was expecting. I was expecting a little bit more along the lines of um, the first one that I read, which was uh, Shifting Fog. Um, but this one is an entirely different. Like it, it was a, oh, I don't even really know how to describe it, um, except that it was sort of a journey story. Um, Edie was uh, basically, it, it started with a letter as you know, turning up to Edie's mum and she gasped at it and all the rest of it. And basically it was the discovery of what that letter meant and all that sort of stuff. And we don't really know what was in it um, until like we get a fair way through the book. There was a lot of stuff in here um, that to my mind was a little bit boring, um, but at the same time it compelled me to keep reading yeah so we learned a lot about Edie along the way and the relationship and why her mum was the way she was and also we learn about uh, Edie's mum Meredith who was a child that was evacuated into uh, during the World War II when they sent all the children from London into the country to stay with people um, and there was little things touched on how you know some of them were mistreated and all the rest of it but Meredith, Edie's mother, wasn't, and so she really had a, a good experience with that and whatnot. But the main story here wasn't really like that was part of it, and that was set in 1992. But we kept going back to the war and that that time period, and we started to focus on the sisters of um, the castle, which for the life of me keeps Mildehurst, <laughs> Mildehurst Castle, um, and. It's focusing on the Blythe sisters, and their father wrote a book called The History of the Mud Man, um, and we find out where that book comes from and the story behind it and all that sort of stuff as we're going through. I'm not going to go into details because that's when I'm going to get into spoiler territory. Um, so, yeah, so we're basically learning about them and why they are the way they are, why they all stayed at the castle and all of that sort of stuff, and... Um, Essentially, this is a tiny bit of a spoiler, but essentially 
um, their father was a bit mad, like he was a bit insane. Um, he, through his own guilt and stuff like that, he had driven himself crazy, in my opinion. I don't think he actually had anything wrong with him. I think it was just his own guilt um, of some circumstances that happened that drove himself insane. Um, but, however... His youngest daughter, she used to, she was losing time and stuff like that. So there was something wrong with her, but they never actually stipulated what was wrong with her. Um, but there is a underlying, like, I can't really talk about it because I start to, will start to give it away. There is an underlying mystery there and we're, we're working out. So I will say that in that era, Juniper was supposed to get married to a man and he disappeared and no one really knows what happened to him. And basically, um, then we're in 1992 and now they're older women and basically, um, Edie ends up finding out certain things that happened and uh, to them and about them and all that sort of stuff because one of the sisters has basically fired the writer, um, so Edie can go to the castle and learn more about it because they, they, um... She sees her as family. That's all I'm going to say. Because other than that, I'm going to start giving it away. So, And I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, um, but I did thoroughly, like, even though I felt like there was a whole lot of nothing happening, it still compelled me to turn the pages. And I'm glad that I kept reading it because the way that the book wrapped up and everything was, it wasn't in a tight little, like a nice little bow, but it was still, um, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it, it just, it was satisfying is the word I'm looking for, I guess. So I've got one more book to, I'm going to leave it at that. I've given this, um, I've given this a 3.75 star because it's not quite a four star and it's not a three star either. Like it, there was a lot of work gone into this and a lot of research and stuff like that. And, and, um, yeah, I feel like that it was just, yeah. There was a whole lot of nothing, but I feel really satisfied after reading it. Um, so, yeah, so I'm happy that I persevered because there was at one stage I was going to DNF it. But then I thought, you know what? I, I'm I'm interested enough to find out. And so that's why I stuck with it. So now I am going on to the next book, which I have no idea where that is. Um, I think it's called Lake House. Hang on a second. I'll just go and grab it. The next book that I'm going to be reading is Lake House. <laughs> it was uh, The Lake House, sorry. Um, and this one is set in June. Um, so the, the dates on the back here are uh, June 9, 1933. And then it's 75 years later in an abandoned home. And meanwhile, there is an un unsolved mystery so that's all I want to read because I don't want to um, know anything else because there's a lot on the back here and I'm thinking that so maybe some things might be given away so that's where I'm going to leave it um, so yeah so we've got a missing child an abandoned house and an unsolved mystery are the three things on the back um, so yeah so I'm looking forward to, to starting this I do have this on audio as well so I should be able to get through it pretty quickly um, but so far the first book of Kate Morton's that I read I absolutely loved I, I just I thought it was the best thing I ever read. This one I'm a little bit mm, about, but it's still a pretty good read. So I'm hoping that we get back to this is a phenomenal book and I'm really happy that I'm reading it. All right, I will check in. I will read a few chapters and I will check in with you um, as soon as I've got to the you know third or fourth chapter and then I'll do my normal check-ins for it. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I'm doing my first check-in of what I think how this book is going to go. I do apologize for the lighting. I'm in my bedroom, 6.30 in the morning, still quite dark here, a bit foggy outside, um, although it's not cold, believe it or not. It's actually not cold. It's, it's starting to get spring-like here, which is great. I love that the war weather warm the weather is warming up and obviously words are escaping me. Um, so I'm doing my first check-in for uh, Kate Morton's The Lake House. Um, I, um, at the time of you seeing this video, I used this for the um, the Beijing leg of the Amazing Readathon and the reason why is because it had a script. Um, we had to have script on our um, title and I had one little word, so I thought I'd use this. So, um, and it's a chunkster, so it's going to get me lots of points. But anyway, we're here for the Meet the Reader. Um, 
And I must say, I hope that Brie runs the amazing readathon next year because it has been it was an amazing reading month during August. Um, I thoroughly enjoy it. So yeah, I hope that she decides to run it again next year because I had a lot of fun. But anyway, that's beside the point. We're here to talk about The Lake House by Kate Morton. Now, as you know, Kate Morton writes historical fiction mysteries. Okay, so there's always a little bit of a mystery element to it. So um, sometimes it can have a little bit of a mystery plus romance element to it, which the first one, the um, uh, Shifting Fog was like that. The second one I read, which was Distant Hours, there was, you know, mystery around a castle of what happened to some people. Also, slight little romance as well. Um, this one seems to have a little bit of a different tone to it, but it is set in 1933. I hope I've got that date right. I will correct that if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> 1933 and 2003. Basically, in 2003, we have Sadie with her grandfather. They're in Cornwall. The story is set in Cornwall, and um, Sadie is a police officer, and um, yeah, and her grandfather and they're in Cornwall. That's all that's really happened at the moment. Um, and then the Lake House, which is, has a different name. I think it's a Gaelic name and I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but it means Lake House. And so there's a, some sort of mystery that has gone on there. We don't really know a lot of details. I'm only up to, I think, page 46. Um, we don't know a lot of details yet, so it's just dropped that little bit of um, a mystery in there that there's a young girl um, that's come back to the house and we know that something's happened and the police have been called and yeah. So we have, we're going back to uh, going backwards and forwards. So right now where I'm in the story, I'm in 2003 and Sadie has just discovered the lake house. The lake house after this particular thing that happened had been abandoned by the wealthy family, never sold or anything like that, just abandoned and left to go to ruin basically. And Sadie has just discovered it. And so uh, there is a lady that is at her grandfather's house um, that she's just met who's collecting um, toys for the summer solstice celebration for the children she's now explaining but i'm not going to go into too much detail because i think that that will be a little bit of a spoiler maybe i don't know yet because i'm only 50 pages in um so yeah so that is a little bit of a spoiler so i'm going to avoid that but she's explaining what happened and why and all that sort of stuff it was before her time but her mother used to talk about it all the time it was quite a big thing um that happened in the 30s um, and I'm pretty sure it's 1933. <laughs> I'm terrible with dates and names. And I, for the life of me, I cannot even remember the name of the people that owned the house. So I know, I think just because we're talking about with Sadie and her grandfather and this lady at the moment. I am actually intrigued quite a bit. I'm going to read a little bit more. Just I wanted to give you the general undertone um, of the um, book. And that is the, the vibe I'm getting. So given that she's a police officer, I'm guessing... Um, cause she said, I've never heard of this story, uh, and that, and, um, but she says that her police, I guess what you would say, spidey senses are tingling and she knows that there's something more there, which we knew that that was going to happen in the moment that we found out that she was a police officer. So, um, I'm pretty intrigued to find out because it was very vague, the opening of the book about what actually happens. So we're just starting to get little tidbits and, and all that sort of stuff. I'm doing some immersive reading with this because um, I've had really dry eyes and when I've been trying to read a book, my eyes have been watering. I have to go down to the chemist today and um, I spoke to the optometrist and he said, just go down and get some of the spray, uh, new spray stuff that they have that you just close your eyes, spray it on and it keeps your eyes moistened. He said, just go down and grab some of that. He goes, it is the weather because it's quite windy at the moment. And plus, given that I've read so much and I've been on the computer a lot, he said, your eyes are just probably not um, coping very much. So I've got to go and get some of that. So hopefully that will help with reading a book. I tried to read a book. <laughs> it wasn't even a sad book and I was there like tears are streaming down my face. So I've got to go and get that sorted out today. But I'm hoping to get another hour or two read in this this morning before I've got to take Young Narrowly off to work. And then before I start work, I'm having a nice relaxing morning, going to have a cuppa and, and all that sort of stuff. And then I've got to do a little bit of work but I'm going to get back into this I will check in in the probably another 50 to 100 pages um this is quite a chunk of book this has got 600 pages so I'm probably going to go to page 150 before I 
think about DNFing it if I'm going to DNF it. Right now, I don't feel like I'm going to. I am thoroughly enjoying um, reading Kate Morton. The second one wasn't as good as the first one, but this one, I'm getting the same sort of vibe as I got from the first one. So hopefully Distant Hours, Distant Hours was the only one that was a bit of a flop for her. Um, um, yeah, but I won't make my decision until I'm finished reading uh, this book. But right now, I'm loving Kate Morton. All right, I'm going to get on with the rest of my day. I hope that you're having a fabulous day wherever you are. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, a welcome back. I did a thing and didn't do a check-in for uh, Kate Morton's The Lake House. I absolutely adore this book. I have given it five stars. Um, I felt that it was a well-rounded. The character development was well-rounded. The story kept me in intrigued is why I didn't do a midpoint check-in. I just fell into this story and I just love how everything interconnected and it flowed from one timeline to the next. Sometimes you can get a um, timeline where it jumps around a little bit and we, with as you know with dual timelines it can be a little bit jarring and whatnot. This flowed seamlessly. Now I was a little bit worried that you know because I read her debut novel which was um, Shifting Fog or the Riverton House. Here in Australia, it's called the Shifting Fog. I, don't, I still don't know why it's only here in Australia. But anyway, I've tried to find that information and I can't seem to find that information anywhere. A little bit worried after I, you know, that I had that really good book and I really enjoyed it. And then I read Distant um, Hours, which it was still a good book, but I just didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed this one. I am so excited to get more of her books because the more I talk to people about Kate Morton, the more I hear really good things about her. This one, I don't I don't want to go into too much detail but we have Sadie we have the Everdeen family um so yeah there's we cover quite a number of the people from the Everdeen family back in the 1930s their child went missing that's the premise for the story and it is an unsolved case so fast forward to 2003 we've got Sadie who has gone to visit her grandfather who has just recently lost his wife and um, has moved to Cornwall um, he has been infatuated with Cornwall for a very long time and that's why he wanted to move there to be near the sea and all that sort of stuff so Sadie has um, had an issue in her regular job as a police officer as a detective she went she crossed the line a bit and she's been asked to just take some time off. So uh, she took some time off and she's gone to visit her grandfather. And while she was there, she was exploring and she came across Loaneth. And Loaneth means a lake house. I finally got to know how to say that. So yeah, Loaneth. It is called um, and has always been called, but it means lake house. And so basically she discovers, you know, some little bits of remnants of the house and all the rest of it. The house is still standing and the family just walked away from it back in the 1930s after their son went missing on a Midsummer's Eve. There are lots of characters in here, but it's not hard to keep track of. It is done, as I said, the timeline and the point of views are done seamlessly, in my opinion. They just flowed really well, so much so that I didn't feel like I was jumping uh, around like you knew you were in different timelines but I didn't feel like I was jumping from perspective to perspective yeah and the way that it was all tied up in the end and whatnot but anyway back to Sadie the reason why she's so prominent in the story is because she discovers there's a cold case um, about the um, Theo uh, which was the son that went missing and so she finds a, um, there's one police officer left alive, still alive from that case. And it's been haunting him for all his life because he just want, he's needed to know. He was only 17 at the time. Um, and so, which might be young for being on the police force, don't you think? But anyway, yeah, he was, um, basically he just wants it to be solved. He wants to end his life knowing that that case that has bugged him all his life has been solved. And so Sadie does a lot of legwork and all that sort of stuff. Uh, we meet um, Alice, who is the sister of the, one of the sisters of the um, child that went missing. I think she was the middle child. We've, you know, we've had some of the family members are deceased and all that sort of stuff. But just... I just loved and adored this book. Like, I could honestly pick this up and read it again. Even though I know how it ends and everything, I just enjoyed myself reading this. And I don't often say that about a book. The only other book that I've said that about is um, the Dictionary 
um, of Lost Words by Pip Williams. Um, so it's very rare that I will go, you know what, I could pick that up and re re revisit that immediately. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you haven't read Kate Morton, <clears throat> out of these three books, I recommend um, both uh, Shifting Fog and this one. This one is my favourite out of the three that I've uh, read. I'm looking forward. I have already sent a message off to Bob the Booker. Um, so by the time you've seen this, I probably have a couple more of her, her books as well. But I am looking forward uh, to reading more from Kate Morton. Um, in the back, there's a couple of... Uh, let me just have a look. There's a couple of um, books in here. There's The Forgotten Garden and The Secret Keeper. Um, the other two I actually have. I don't know if there's any in the front. No, there's not. Um, and, yeah, so I was uh, super, super happy with my little $2 purchase. So is Kate Mortner an um, uh, author for me? I think you've already guessed that she is. So um, I'm looking forward to getting more books from her and um it, discussing them with you and uh yeah if you haven't picked up kate, kate morton i highly say and you like historical fiction okay now to classify this book i would say it's a historical fiction mystery romance it has three genres in it but it is beautifully done um so there is a little bit of infidelity in this but even so i don't like reading about infidelity you can see why around that era there was a lot of infant like there, there seems to be a lot of infidelity written into books this one just hit the nail on the head for it and all the rest of it i do i do like it where like i don't like reading about it but i do like it when an author gives there is never a valid reason for um or infidelity in my opinion but this sort of validated it if does not make sense i don't think it does but anyway just just so you know if you don't like reading about it it doesn't go into great detail about their relationship it's just the, it, it um expresses the longing and the nurturing that they got from one another if that makes sense all right so i'm going to leave it at that before i end up spoiling it but if i would highly recommend um reading uh Shifting Fog first or River, The Riverton House first because that's her debut novel. That will give you a sense of where she's going to go as an author. Um, and then she surpassed that with, in my opinion, with The Lake House. So I would go for that one. Distant Hours, I would still recommend it, but I feel that um, you might be slightly disappointed after reading um, Shifting Fog uh, or The Lake House, you might be a little bit disappointed because I just don't think that that was as solid as um, the, the other two that I've read. Anyway, I'm going to leave this vlog as it is. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again next month with another author. Um, I'm not too sure who I'm going to be looking at next month. I do have several authors on my shelf that I've never read before from recommendations of friends and all of that sort of stuff. So yeah, I look forward to seeing you all, all very soon. Have a great day, everybody. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Maybe share it with a friend that might be thinking about um reading kate morton and uh or just share it with your friends in general and uh leave a comment down below and tell me have you read any of kate morton's uh books and what you thought about them and as always have a fabulous day and i will see you in the next video bye for now